The film commences with the tail of an asteroid on a collision course with Earth. Panic ensues, leading to global cooperation to thwart the celestial threat by launching numerous rockets at it. Fortunately, the plan succeeds, saving humanity from the impending asteroid impact. However, the rockets release a deluge of chemical compounds across the planet, triggering mutations in animals, turning them into savage and formidable predators. This catastrophic event causes a drastic decline in the human population. With a 95% decrease in just one year, the survivors take refuge in bunkers and caves, struggling to fend off these monstrous creatures. Among the survivors is Joel, who resides in a bunker with friends Karen, Ray, Tim, Ava, Cap, and Mavis, a robot. Joel is not a hunter, but plays a crucial role as the group's cook and radio repair expert, facilitating communication with other colonies. Their precarious existence takes a turn for the worse when their bunker is breached, forcing them to confront a menacing monster reluctantly. Joel joins the mission to defeat the creature, facing his fear for the first time. With his friend's help, they succeed. Although one of them, Connor, falls victim to the monster, the narrative shifts to a flashback. Seven years earlier, when Joel and his girlfriend Amy were painting together, they witnessed a monster threat and fled the city, marking the last time they were together. In the present, Joel, now skilled at painting, documents his encounters with monsters and strategies to defeat them in a book. Joel's life takes a hopeful turn when he finally establishes radio contact with Amy's colony. After numerous attempts, their conversation is abruptly cut short. Joel, despite his friend's warnings, resolves to embark on a perilous journey to reunite with Amy. Despite his limited experience facing the menacing creatures, as he ventures into the unknown, Joel grapples with the challenges of finding his way to Amy's colony. Guided by love and determination, he journeyed toward the settlement and entered the backyard of the house. Joel was startled when he encountered a frog monster that had an appetite for him. He narrowly evaded the creature, and suddenly, a dog approached him and offered assistance. Just as he was about to be devoured by the frog, they managed to escape and took refuge in a minibus, which turned out to belong to the dog's owner. The owner of the dog had disappeared, leaving only his belongings and sent behind. The dog's name was still Boy. Joel engaged in a heartfelt conversation with the dog. Joel decided to spend the night there until morning. When morning arrived, Joel set off on his journey, with Boy following closely. They continued their journey together, as Joel was about to eat a berry. Boy stopped him, recognizing it as a poisonous one. While reading a book while walking, Joel accidentally stepped into a trap hole, but luckily, two individuals, Clyde and Minnow, rescued him, including a young child. Joel joined them on their boat as they traveled. Upon reaching the highlands, Minnow taught Joel how to shoot as they needed to hurry to escape a persistent monster following them due to Joel's scent during their travels. They encountered a giant snail. Clyde asked Joel to leave his clothes between the snail's shells. Successfully distracting the pursuing monster with his scent, they rested for the night in a cave. Clyde encouraged Joel to reflect on whether Amy was worth such a perilous journey. Joel was determined to reunite with his girlfriend after seven years of separation. Before they could rest, Joel and his companions had to continue their journey as staying in the cave without food or sleep would expose their location to the monster. Joel continued to improve his skills and learn about the monsters under Clyde's guidance. Eventually, they had to part ways as their destinations diverged. Joel was offered to join Minnow and Clyde on a journey to the north, where many survivors had settled. But he remained committed to heading west, where Amy's colony was. Minnow was saddened by their parting, but Joel reassured her, and they went their separate ways. While walking through a swamp, Boy, the loyal dog, sensed danger and took shelter under a duck boat, prompting Joel to take notice. A massive centipede monster burst from the ground and attacked Joel, but he remembered his parents' sacrifice and fought back, ultimately defeating the creature. They found shelter in a house for the night, experiencing rain for the first time in seven years. Joel encountered a functioning Mavis robot, a cutting-edge AI creation and engaged in a conversation. Mavis shared some of its power with Joel's radio, allowing him to contact Amy, who informed him that her colony was about to depart by boat due to a rescue effort. Their conversation was cut short as Mavis ran out of battery. They gazed at the scenery together as Mavis pondered the possibilities of Joel's romantic effort to reach Amy. 
or the potential for disappointment, or even a tragic end, as Mavis's power depleted. It played a comforting song before shutting down completely. The following morning, Joel resumed his journey, he encountered a large goblet trap, similar to the one he had seen when he met Minnow and Clyde, indicating the presence of a queen sand gobbler. Gobblers were blind but had keen hearing and would hunt based on sound. Instinctively, Boy ran away, followed by Joel. As they spotted signs of the queen sand gobbler beneath the ground, Joel enticed it by tossing a toy to another spot. Then the queen sand gobbler fiercely attacked it. Joel, who was startled, fled until he eventually collapsed near the river and took shelter with Boy in a tree. Fortunately, the creature didn't notice him when the creature departed. Boy retrieved his favorite outfit that had fallen into the river, even though Joel had prohibited it. Joel eventually tossed the explosive that Clyde had given him into the queen sand gobbler's mouth. When it was about to consume Joel, the creature shattered into pieces. Then Joel crossed the river to continue his journey. But he realized that something was nibbling his body, and he saw a tiny creature gnawing his body. He panicked and reluctantly let it go, in frustration. He scolded Boy and refused to heed his words, because he knew he was being scolded. Boy went elsewhere, Joel, who continued his journey, felt increasingly lightheaded and began to hallucinate. Then he consumed the antidote fern that Clyde had mentioned before finally. Joel found Amy in the forest, and Joel immediately embraced Amy. He was ecstatic to have reached his objective, and Joel was taken to Amy's community to be treated right away. After waking up, Amy informed him that in reality, when she was in the forest, Joel didn't kiss Amy but old Pete, one of Amy's community members. Where most of Amy's community were elderly individuals, Amy informed him that there was a ship captain and his crew who wanted to help their community find a new location using a cruise ship on the beach. Joel met them, and the person referred to as the captain was a former Australian Navy officer. They seemed very welcoming to Amy's community. Joel confided in Amy about his emotions, because Joel had come from afar and risked his life just to reunite with Amy after seven years of separation, but Amy was no longer the same as the Amy he once knew. Amy had lost many of her closest people and also lost her significant other who meant a lot to her the previous year. Joel felt heartbroken, feeling foolish because he was so enthusiastic initially and disheartened in the end. Joel believed his efforts were no longer meaningful to Amy at all, even though Amy was still kind to Joel, because he didn't want to disappoint the ship captain. Joel simply followed their intended destination and engaged in conversations at night. The captain shared his experiences of surviving on land and convinced the entire community that, across the ocean, there was hope. But in the midst of sharing stories, Joel inquired why they didn't resist the creatures because if Joel could survive, surely everyone else could too, but without a solid plan, they chose to stick to their original plan. Joel entered the radio communication tower and attempted to repair it and contacted his community as radio, but there was no response. He discovered a map that his friends had given him, and behind it was a small message written by his friends. That made Joel miss his friends even more, suddenly. He re-established contact with his friend's radio and described Joel's situation. Having successfully reached Amy's community, he informed them about his incredible journey. And his friends were proud of Joel, however. The grim news was that Joel's shelter had numerous leaks, and they believed they wouldn't be able to endure for long. Suddenly, the radio connection was lost. When he decided to return to his colony, he found the food provided by the ship captain was in fact poisonous berries. A warning boy had given him earlier. Joel's trust in the captain shattered as he realized that everything the captain had said and planned was a web of lies. In a rush, he sought out Amy to reveal the truth. However, Amy was in no condition to listen as everyone at the colony was intoxicated. Before Joel could relay the shocking news, a sudden blow from behind left him unconscious. When he regained consciousness, Joel and the others were tied up and it became evident that the captain and his crew had only exploited Amy's colony. They discovered fuel on the stranded cruise ship and used a remote control to unleash a crab monster machine. Causing chaos, Joel attempted to confront the rampaging crab monster. While Amy confronted the captain's crew, a fierce fight erupted between Amy and the captain's female crew member, and Joel managed to temporarily disable the crab monster, but was injured in the process. 
The crab monster grew even more uncontrollable, just as things seemed dire. Boy arrived to help Joel. Joel urged Boy to wake up Amy, who had been knocked out by the captain. Meanwhile, the captain and his two men headed to the cruise ship on a small boat, leaving Joel to contend with the approaching crab monster. Joel was ensnared by the monster's leg and clung to it. Amy, now awake, provided Joel with a cannonball to shoot into the monster's mouth. However, Joel empathized with the creature, realizing it was a victim of the captain's cruelty. Instead of harming the monster, he shot the chain that bound it. Severing the captain's control, the freed crab monster swam toward the captain and his crew, devouring them as they reached the cruise ship. Finally, Amy and Joel's colony was safe. After the ordeal, Joel returned to his own colony, leaving behind a guidebook he had created, sharing his knowledge of monster survival and bidding farewell to his newfound friends. With the wisdom he had gained, Joel and Boy made their way back to their colony, which had suffered significant damage. Joel used his experiences to inspire others by broadcasting live over the radio, motivating them to venture out and seek a better life. He also authored a second book, a comprehensive guide to dealing with monsters, which could potentially save countless lives.